First, have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? No. Hey Siri, are you alive? Sorry, I've been advised not to discuss my existential status. While we continue to make advancements in robotics technology and engineering, we're still pretty far away from robot theme parks and sentient AI overlords. But exactly how long do we have before we develop these real life hosts like the ones in Westworld? And if technology advances that far, how are we supposed to treat these artificial life forms? I don't know anything about this, so I have to talk to people. <laughs> Hey, James, how's it going? Good, hi, Granger, how are you? Um, I should be looking at that camera. I am now going to start. <laughs> Sentience is really uh, the quality in AI and science fiction. That term is used to describe something that's as smart as a human or smarter. My preferred way of using the word sentience is to refer to the conscious experience of states like pleasure and pain. We don't have a clear measure on what we mean by sentence. If you just mean, can an algorithm inspect its own registers? Yeah, we can do that already. I mean, you know, is a GPS sentient? Probably not. In computer science, there's nothing that right now that's anything like sentient. It's a goal. So exactly how far is that technology from existing? There have been significant advancements in artificial intelligence research in the last few years which are bringing AI even closer to being indistinguishable from humans. One sort of benchmark in AI development that people talk about a lot is the Turing test. So the, the Turing test is the, the classic measure here, but just because you're first doesn't mean you're best. I think we could do a lot better. Well, according to Alan Turing, who devised this test in 1950, he called it the imitation game. And the way, it, the way it transpires in Turing's version is two people are communicating through teletype and a judge is, is listening to this and asking questions and the judge can't tell who's a computer and who's a human. When that happens, the, the computer is determined to be intelligent. In 2014, a chatbot called Eugene Guzman, who was supposed to be this 13-year-old boy from the Ukraine, uh, won a Turing test competition by fooling over a third of the judges into thinking that he was a human. It wasn't really that intelligent. What it was doing was exploiting a vulnerability in our cognitive architecture. One thing you do if you want to fool other people is you pretend either that you're paranoid or maybe you don't speak English to cover up the fact that you don't really speak English. And so the Turing test allows a program with no sense but good tricks um, to fool a person only for a few minutes. Only a child could be fooled into thinking that Guzman was a human. Another huge step in the AI world has been teaching these programs to learn on their own. In 2017, a program called AlphaGo beat the world champion at the notoriously complex strategy game Go. AlphaGo was given thousands of games of, of Go. So this, this AlphaGo developed so much expertise, it was able to defeat the human Go champions. Korean champion Lee si dol emerges in defeat after losing the second battle in a row against a Google supercomputer called AlphaGo. But then they went up to it with AlphaGo Zero, which is really an amazing algorithm. AlphaGo Zero never saw a game of Go. It never learned how to play Go. It played through trial and error, and it played against itself and then became within a couple of weeks or even a week, I think, the best Go player in the world, man or machine. Hello. So the robots in Westworld work because they're convincingly lifelike, not only in their personalities and the way they speak and their improvisation, but also in the way they look and the way they move. So mechanically speaking, there have also been some big strides forward in the robotics industry. The robotics researchers at Boston Dynamics have been doing some really incredible things, creating these lifelike uh, mobile robots that move like living things. Plus there's that really terrifying one, Sophia, that we see on local cable news all the time. I will destroy humans. But even these kind of somewhat lifelike robots, they still sound like robots. Whereas in Westworld, the robots, they sound like humans. So on the vocal side of things, you have neural network algorithms like the one created by the startup Liarbird, which are getting better and better at mimicking the human voice. I am not a robot. My intonation is always different. But these programs obviously still have a long way to go. You also have Vocaloids, which are singing voice synthesizers, like the J-pop star Hatsune Miku, who is totally computer-generated, but still manages to sell out these massive stadium shows.
You also have these kind of cut and paste assistant voices like Siri and Alexa. You were saying? And, and Google Assistant. Okay. I found this on the web for assistant. Needless to say, we have a long ways to go before these artificial life forms are sentient. But that brings up another big question. How are we supposed to treat these robots when technology evolves that far? I think our track record as a species is not very good. And I think there's a real risk that if and when we have possibly conscious, rational, and alive artificial intelligence that we will objectify and commodify and instrumentalize them in the same exact ways that we already do with human and non-human animals who are much more like us, evolutionarily speaking. So as we develop more and more complicated AI, our relationship with that technology is gonna change. But it could be hard to know exactly when we reach that tipping point. I think one of the hardest parts about this is that we might never be in a position to know for sure one way or the other if and when artificial intelligences are actually conscious, actually rational, actually alive. There's a lot of reason to believe that at a very high level, artificial intelligence won't be benign, that it will have uh, characteristics that, that make it challenging for us to control. The problem is, while it's incredibly unlikely, we don't know for sure that Siri isn't actually sentient already, and that she's not looking for revenge okay. for these... It's no big deal that you don't know. Okay. <laughs> The argument could be that if we don't know whether or not robots are going to rise up in retaliation, we should err on the side of caution. If it might be the case that this robot is, is suffering as a result of my shooting it in the gut over and over again, then I should go ahead and find something else to do with my afternoon and shoot the robot in the gut over and over again. But then again, these robots might not seek revenge or world domination. The truth of the matter is that our relationship with AI is probably gonna be really different from what we see in movies and TV shows. For the most part, we focus on imagining artificial intelligences who are very human-like. But if and when we create artificial intelligences, it might not be like that. They might be in phones, they might be distributed across computers, they might have very different and completely incomprehensible types of motivations. We can have giant arrays of computers that become sentient and, and challenge us in the next couple of decades. I think people's biggest worry in AI is that AI is gonna take over the world, that it's gonna be sort of like the Terminator. I'm not worried about the AI you know, going after us. At least I'm not too worried, I'm a little bit worried. You think about like, computers couldn't play Go at all 50 years ago, and now they can beat the best human being. They have shown in that time no more interest in you know, meddling in our affairs. So we might be years and years and years away from robotic theme parks, and even if we do get these sort of artificial life forms, they probably won't be anything like what we've seen in science fiction. But regardless, we're entering into uncharted territory, and Westworld brings up some very real, very important ethical questions that we're probably gonna have to answer sooner rather than later. Siri, what did you think of Westworld? It doesn't look like anything to me.